My name is Frank Rodriguez. Um, I made these videos, which I titled The Faces of Kensington, um, because every time I go down there to do work in the community, I always see those people and we're so quick to walk past them, ignore them, look down upon them, um, and think everybody's just down there as a result of them chasing their next high or you know, things like that. Um, everybody has a story though. And um, a lot of them are down there self-medicating, you know, and I don't judge. I've been down there one time myself. Luckily my addiction didn't lead to me being homeless. It easily could have. And if I pick back up, it could lead me there right now. I could lose everything I've, I, I, I got right now, everything I've worked so hard to obtain. I could lose it all quickly um, if I don't remain humble and grateful. So that's what made me decide to uh, to make this little docu-series, I guess. Um, this is the first one we got. You know, I, I, got, I got a decent amount of interviews. And a lot of these people are so eager to talk because they don't want to see other people repeat the mistakes that they made themselves. So, what's your name? Diamond Merlo. Diamond Merlo. Where are you from? Um, originally, I grew up at 22nd and Diamond, and then my family moved to the Northeast. Okay. How long you been down here? Um, going on a little over a year now. And uh, how you find yourself down here? Um, it started, like, basically I had my appendix taken out, and I had surgery, started with um, taking Percocets and stuff. Then when that became too expensive, you know, my friend introduced me to heroin, which was so much cheaper and, you know, a lot easier to get. I had to wait for people to go to the pharmacy and stuff. So I started with the heroin and then eventually, you know, not doing what my family wanted, it came to a point of, you know, well, if you continue to get high and choose that over us, then, you know, you can't stay here no more. And um, it wasn't the fact that I was choosing the drugs over them. I had this... I was scared to death to be sick, you know? And um, at what age did you first start using? 13. 13. Is there anything that happened like that made you want to start using? Yeah, um, a lot of trauma in my life. Um, my dad was physically abusive. Okay. And then um, my dad's best friend was raping me my whole life. So the age seven to nine, he raped me until my brother shot him. So my brother's in jail to this day. Double life to shoot him and another guy. brother shot the man that yeah. was raping you? Yeah, my brother, if you actually look in the newspapers now, he was actually printed three days ago or something, a Robert McDale, you can look it up. Um, Robert McDale, Gerald Drummond, they killed two guys. They were caught, the guys were caught raping me, my dad's best friend and another guy, his friend. They were in the room holding me down, you know, sodomizing me and stuff. And my brother shot the one and his, my sister's baby's father stabbed him. They're in jail. They've been in jail for about 11 years now. How old were you when this started? Um, it started around the age of seven to nine, and then um, about 11 years ago, I'd say about 13 to 15 years ago, I started, you know, when I started to try to get clean and um, do the right thing, I came out to a counselor at Kirkbride Rehabilitation Center and told them what happened. Mm -hmm. They called my family, told my family, which they weren't supposed to do because I wasn't ready. And um, I winded up going home, and my dad's best friend, which he was like an uncle to me, John Sabara, he's dead, um, the one my brother killed. Um, he got out of jail, and I was at my dad's one night, we were drinking, he winds up showing up at the house in Atco, New Jersey. And um, two nights later of him staying there, we were all drinking again, and you know, I'm in the room, and you know, my lifestyle and the way I am. I'm putting a dress on and high heels and stuff. And next thing you know, two guys come in the room, they push me up against the wall. 